672 to 700 CE. He continued the tradition of carving of monolithic temples initiated by Narasimha Varman I at Mamallapuram. The Honorable President of People's Republic of China, Xi Jinping, showing keen interest to understand the different aspects of history. गणेश रथ का ये जो पूरा अखंड मंदिर है ये शिव को समर्पित है इट हैज अ नैरो मुख मंडपा विच हैज टू लाइन पिलर्स इन द सेंटर एंड टू लाइन पिलास्टर्स एंड फ्लैंक बाय टू द्वार पालर्स एट इधर एंड Prime Minister Modi had emphasized on the importance of people-to-people -people contact through an acronym STRENGTH. S. Spirituality. D. Tradition. Trade and Technology. R. Relationship. E. Entertainment. That includes movies, art, N for nature conservation, G games, T tourism, and H for health and healing. In the backdrop of the two leaders now, Krishna's butter ball. They say conveys more than a thousand words. Two powerful leaders, leaders of two powerful economies of Asia. Krishna's butterball is very intriguing. One wonders how this boulder is delicately balanced by nature. Why does this boulder does not fall? How does it defy gravity? Quite a mystery. But that is why it is such an attraction for tourists across the globe. If you want to see Krishna's butterball, you'll have to come to Tamil Nadu, India, at a place called Mamullapuram, 
which is the venue for the second informal summit between India and China. स्थानीय लोग इसे कृष्ण का माखन लड्डू कहते हैं यह लगभग छ मीटर ऊंचाई पांच मीटर चौड़ाई और वजन में लगभग ढाई सौ टन का है कितनी सुंदरता से बिल्कुल संतुलित खड़ा कृष्णा बाटाबॉल एक प्राकृतिक स्मारक है So the entire group of monuments that includes the Arjuna's penance, the Panch Rats, and the Shaw Temple, the three monuments that the Chinese president will get to see today before all the leaders attend the cultural program. The entire group of monuments is considered a World Heritage Site by UNESCO. Indian and Chinese cultures were based on development along river banks. Whether it was the Ganga or the Yangtze River, it provides habitat for humanity, for flora and fauna. And as both India and China aspire to become more and more developed economies, it is also very essential to lay emphasis on the soft power. So in this informal meeting, there is no written agenda, no MOUs to be signed, just a freewheeling discussion and exchange of thoughts. And after visiting the premises of the Arjuna Spendence, the two leaders now move on towards the Panch Rathas. The five brothers of Mamalapuram exhibit the different types of vimanas, like a magnificent periodic table of Dravidian architecture. These are carved from top to bottom. The five monuments, popularly known as Panch Pandav Rathams, are temples to Shiva, Vishnu, Skanda, Durga, and Ganesha. There are three freestanding sculptures of animals, a lion, an elephant, and a bull, symbolizing the vehicles or vahans of gods. Every rock and every boulder here stands tall as a testimony to the architecture of the Pallava kings. <laughs> Ratas here at this World Heritage Site in Mamalapura. The masterful stonework, sheer poetry in stone, has for centuries left the visitor mesmerized by its magnificence. 
and intrigued at the same time because no one knows why they were never completed. These spectacular rathas or chariots seem to wish today in readiness to take back in time two very special guests who share a special friendship. The Chinese President, Mr. Xi Jinping and the Indian Prime Minister, Sri Narendra Modi Ji. They represent two ancient cultures that have had ties of trade, friendship, and perhaps most importantly, of spirituality for several centuries. This site is situated almost a kilometer away from Arjuna's penance, while Arjuna's penance is an exquisite example of bar relief, these chariots are unique monoliths. Of the Honorable Prime Minister of India, Sri Narendra Modi ji here at the Pancharatha site. Taking pride in one's culture is what makes receives President Xi a beautiful setting sun adding magical light to the site. The Panch Rathas are also known as the Panch Pandava Rathas and they are an excellent example of monolithic architecture. Pandava kings who built these rathas were known to experiment with new and different forms of art and architecture. They pioneered rock cut architecture that can be seen all around the Mahabali Turan complex. small structure is called Draupadi Ratha. It looks like a hermit's abode with a hut like thatched roof with a curved effect. The shrine is dedicated to Goddess Durga. In the foreground is the mount of the Goddess, the standing lion. This is the Nakul Sehede Pratha. It is absided in its shape. There are no figure carvings on this Pratha, but its beauty lies in its simplicity. Next to it stands a life-size monolithic elephant. This is a fine example of Pallava imagination and cross propensity for experimentation. This is the largest of the five structures with a roof that is shaped like a country wagon.
it's interesting how these ratas are named after Pandavas, epic heroes from the epic, the Mahabharata. And the Mahabharata, which dates back to circa 5th century BC, mentions China. So we know that our ties with China go back thousands of years. The Yudhishthir or Dharmaraj Ratha is the tallest structure. It depicts the maturing of temple architecture and is the most refined of the five structures. It became the basis of the temples to come later during the reign of the Cholas and others thereafter. supported by carved pillars with light bases and corner supports. There are many lifelike sculptures on the corners of this shrine that depict various manifestations of Lord Shiva. The two leaders pause for a moment to admire these great works of art. One of the greatest of Chinese poets is Li Bai, who lived in the 8th century. His words resonate on this occasion. We sit together, the mountain and me, until only the mountain remains. In only such a meditative state could the artists have created such works of beauty, and the beauty in turn takes one into a meditative state. And admire the sheer beauty of these structures. Those who could hear a song this deeply vanished long ago. The first records of contact between China and India were written during the second century BC. Buddhism was transmitted from India to China in the first century AD. Trade relations via the Silk Road acted as economic contact between the two regions. There is a thousand year old history between Chuanzhou and Tamil Nadu. Tamil traders lived there during the Song and Yuan dynasties and built temples there. The most famous being the Chedian Temple, which has a beautiful deity, which is called by a different name in China. But archaeologists believe that the style of that deity is exactly similar to the kind of work that was being done at the same time in India. In the 1930s, dozens of stones showing perfectly rendered images of the god Narasimha, the man-lion avatar of Vishnu, were unearthed in Chuanshu. in circa 350 BC, who was the Prime Minister of the Mauryan Empire, 
refers to Chinese silk as Chinam Sukha or the Chinese silk dress and China Patta for the Chinese silk bundle in his Arthashastra. In the records of the grand historian Zhang Qian, in 113 BC and Sima Chian in 145 BC make references to Shindu, which may have been referring to the Indus Valley, originally known as Sindhu in Sanskrit. many interesting similarities and commonalities between India and China is sugar, which was first developed in China. And when it came to India, we called it chini, meaning something which is referred to as Chinese. And even today, when we talk about sweetness in life or in relationships, we talk about chini. The Choras maintained a good relationship with the Chinese. An entire treasure trove of ancient Chinese coins have been found in the Chora homeland. Many sources describe the great sage Bodhidharma, the founder of the Zen school of Buddhism in China, as a prince of the Pallava dynasty. During the 8th century, the astronomical tables of signs by the Indian astronomer and mathematician Aryabhata were translated into the Chinese astronomical and mathematical book of the treatise of astrology of the Puyan era. And of all the beautiful Chinese things that have become part of the Indian tradition are the Chinese fishing nets in Kerala. They were probably introduced in the 14th century and today are a major tourist attraction. People come from all across the world to look at them. structures here, the ratas, date back to the 7th century and are attributed to the reign of King Mahindra Varman and his son Narasimha Varman in the 7th century of the Pandava Kingdom. These temple structures were never consecrated due to which some historians even speculate that this could be a training ground of sorts to create templates for future endeavor for creating larger templates. This is the second informal meeting between President Xi and Prime Minister of India, Sri Narendra Modi. Remind me of the 
words of the Pope. You ask me why I make my home in the mountain forest, and I smile and I'm silent, and even my soul remains quiet. It lives in the other world, which no one owns. You ask me why I dwell amidst these jade green hills. I smile. No words can tell the stillness in my heart. I live in the other world, one that lies beyond the human. science and economics have always gone hand in hand between India and China. Five of these rathas are present here, of which four are linear, whereas the fifth, which is the Nakul Sehdev Ratha, stands apart. elephant and the lion standing close together, almost lifelike. years ago by the great Chola Emperor Raja Raja. A Shiva temple in China and the use of Chinese umbrellas centuries ago shed light on ancient links between Tamil Nadu and the Dragon Land. In fact, one finds similarity in the lines that we see here in many of the temples of Tamil Nadu to the dragons of China. here in Wuhan, an ancient city which at the same time is modern in China and of course and now this meeting in Mamalapuram. Meetings where the two leaders meet as friends 